So ever since Quadruple UDC this year, I've actually been doing all of my video thumbnails on my iPhone, which was basically all that my iPad could do left. And now I've gone on multiple trips without bringing my iPad with me, and I've still been able to get a lot of work done without it. And now that it's been nearly two months of no iPad in my life, I'm starting to ask the question, will I ever buy an iPad again? Will I ever find a need or a use for one? We'll see if Apple can change anything about that. Let's begin. All right, so first off, let me just be upfront and say that I don't think no one should own iPads. I'm okay if you have one. I'm not going to freak out at any time someone pulls one out. I'm just trying to figure out if in my workflow and if in my lifestyle, I can justify ever upgrading again. I mean, yes, I've had the 2018 iPad Pro for almost four years now, and I still think that was peak iPad. You know, the A12X chip at the time was insanely fast. It got USB-C, which was a big deal. It got this updated chassis, the better Apple Pencil connectivity, and ProMotion, of course, has shaped the way I buy products now. But given it's been almost two months and I still haven't really touched that thing anymore because my MacBook Pro is so good, the battery life is incredible, the display is bigger, it has better dynamic range than the iPad, we watch a lot of content on it, and just basically anytime I want a screen bigger than my iPhone and I'm on the go, I just find myself always jumping back to the MacBook, and I don't find myself missing the iPad. And it's not just me in my personal life, I've noticed that neither of my parents are using their iPads anymore. They're very happy just sticking with scrolling on their iPhones, as is my wife, who has my old 2017 iPad Pro, the 10 and a half inch version, and even she doesn't pack that on trips. She doesn't have much use for it. She doesn't pick it up or use it much at home either. So this all kind of comes back to, I think, the identity crisis that the iPad started with. You know, when Steve Jobs introduced it, it was all about trying to find this middle ground between an iPhone and a Mac. Some Something that was more personal, but that could do more than your iPhone could and just gave you that more screen flexibility that the iPhone couldn't offer. But I think what's changed a lot now and maybe why I don't find much of a place and seems like a lot of people in my personal life as well can't find a place for the iPad in their ecosystems is because the iPhone has gotten so much bigger. Steve Jobs was such a fan of small, lightweight, portable tech. And when he was around, we had three and a half inch iPhones and that was about it. I think what's changed a lot now is iPhones, of course, have grown to six and a half inches, especially if you're like me and you're comfortable with multitasking back and forth between Twitter and Discord and iMessage on your phone. And that's, of course, always going to be far more portable than an iPad. It can fit in your pocket. You can use it with one hand. Even the iPad mini is quite challenging to use with one hand. So the fact that the iPhone is capable of doing so much and no, it doesn't quite have the split screen multitasking or the stage manager features of an iPad, but I feel like if you do want windowed multitasking, why settle for the watered down version of it with Stage Manager when MacBooks have gotten so good and so capable these days? I mean, part of the reason is because, you know, I kind of went all out with my MacBook Pro and that is a really, really solid machine. So perhaps if your budget was more close to a thousand dollars, but you still really wanted 120 hertz and you wanted Face ID on your laptop and you didn't really care if it didn't have all of the Mac OS capability or Pro apps that we have now, I guess I could see that argument of people wanting to go with an iPad and Magic Keyboard case over a MacBook, but if you're like me and you can justify spending the extra money on a 14-inch or 16-inch MacBook Pro and you're complementing that with an iPhone 13 Pro Max, an iPad very quickly, in my view, starts to become redundant because your MacBook's already mobile and your iPhone can get quite a lot of work done even with a screen that fits in your pocket. So what is Apple planning to change with the iPad lineup? What do we have going for us? Because we haven't gotten new iPad Pros this this year yet, but the 2021 iPad Pro launched over a year ago now, and Apple typically upgrades the iPad Pros every 12 to 18 months. So that means later this year, probably in the fall, we're going to be getting another version of iPad Pros, which are rumored to have the M2 chip, which was, you know, like a big swing and a miss in terms of massive performance gains, but because of the thermal architecture of an iPad and what iPadOS is truly capable of, I don't think many people will notice or care that the 
the M2 chip can't be taken to its full potential in an iPad because iPad OS will prevent you from pushing it to its full potential long before the M2 chip starts thermal throttling. So I think it will be marginally better in a few regions, but definitely not a massive improvement in any way. And unfortunately, there's still a lot of talk that the 11 inch iPad Pro is not going to be getting mini LED. And whether it's because of chip shortages and supply chain issues, regardless, it's just kind of a bummer now that we've had mini LED on the iPad Pro for over a year, but only on that one screen size. And yes, it did come with a price increase, but even in 2022, they don't think they can get 11 inch mini LED display working, which sure, that's a bit of a bummer, but what else does the iPad Pro have going for it? Well, it's supposed to get some form of MagSafe charging. No one can really figure out if that means the same kind of MagSafe we have on our iPhones, which in my view is royally stupid. Trying to align a giant iPad and having to buy all new keyboard cases and accessories just to make a little magnetic ring clap to the back. Does that mean the entire back of the iPad has to be glass? That increases the weight and makes it far more fragile. Or does that mean you have to add this weird little ring somewhere on that aluminum enclosure? Sounds really tacky to me, so while I haven't seen anyone confirm this or say it's happening, it would kind of make more sense to bring the MacBook MagSafe to the iPad, but even that is a stretch in my view because it's a single-use port, and I guess they brought it to the MacBook Air now, so Apple can brag about it being, you know, the new standard of fast charging that's easy to plug in. You know, you'll scratch the paint on your device like never before, but I guess that would free up the Thunderbolt port on the iPad for more accessories and that kind of thing, but I think what's really turned me off of wanting to upgrade my iPad ever in the future is seeing how iPadOS is treating the M series of chips, where Apple claims that Stage Manager needs an M1 chip to work, and one second they say, yeah, virtual memory swap is needed for Stage Manager, and then the next second they say, oh yeah, the 64 gig iPad Air 5, that doesn't get virtual memory swap because it doesn't have enough storage for it. So even Apple can't really keep their story straight as to why only M1 iPads can have Stage Manager, but regardless of if there's a way they could bring that to older iPads, it still has shown proof that Apple is comfortable releasing versions of iPad OS with a ton of features that only apply to the latest iPads. And I remember arguing with a lot of people in the comments of these videos saying, no, 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 Apple can't introduce pro apps because they want all iPad OS features to be available to all new iPads. So if you introduce Final Cut, that has to be available on the iPad mini and the iPad mini with the A series of chips can't handle that. Okay, we've thrown all that argument out the door now, right? Because stage manager, virtual memory swap, and the tech scaling and the external monitor support, all of that is restricted to just iPads that have been sold over the past year. So even people who dropped $1,000 on their iPad two years ago are already getting software locked out of features. And again, regardless of if they're telling the truth or not, especially when we've seen Samsung DeX work with four gigs of RAM and Snapdragon chips way slower than Apple's chips running lots of windowed apps at the same time, even if all that's true, it's proven that Apple is comfortable releasing pro features and upgrading iPads, but only offering those software features to the latest version. And that just makes me feel icky about buying an iPad again and expecting it to get years and years of support, where I feel like there's a decent chance now if someone doesn't feel like upgrading their iPad, Apple will feel pressured to come up with some new pro feature, but it's only available on the M2 version of the iPad Pro. Or in the future, it's only going to work on the M3 version of the iPad Pro. And then you're left with a $2,000 iPad that is no longer capable of getting all the new features of iPad OS, even though it's only two years old. That really makes me hesitant to ever upgrade again, and it makes me wonder if they're going to pull that kind of stuff this year with the M2 iPad Pro. Because obviously they want it to feel like a big upgrade, but the market has kind of tested and seen that the M2 chip is not, you know, leaps and bounds better than M1, which is to be expected. And MagSafe on the iPad, whether it's the MacBook version or the iPhone version, neither of those sounds terribly exciting or interesting or like game changing for the iPad. Oh, okay. I guess you free up the Thunderbolt port, but most people, if they care about the Thunderbolt port on their iPads, are going to be charging through the smart connector on the back anyway, through the Magic Keyboard case, because that gives you another USB-C port back, which is good for charging. And again, mini LED, 120 hertz, that's all rumored to just stay with the 12.9 inch version, 11 inch version, just kind of sits there with an M2 chip and ooh, center stage LiDAR, is that totally worth upgrading for? So maybe because Apple has started building M2 chips that have 24 gigs of RAM, I could see them start boasting about like, hey, if you buy the one terabyte or two terabyte iPads, those now come with 24 gigs of RAM. And if you buy, you know, a 512 gig iPad or a 256 gig iPad, those come 
come with 16 gigs of RAM and only the base iPad Pro comes with 8 gigs of RAM. And of course, there will likely be price hikes along with that to accommodate for the more complicated silicon. But I used to think Apple would not complicate the M series of chips very much, but then they went ahead and made a custom version of M1 with 64 gigs of storage just for the iPad Air 5, even though there was no Mac that was using 64 gigs of storage. They made it just for the iPad. So that's what makes me think that Apple will try to justify higher prices, especially with the inflationary environment we're in. Don't expect any price cuts on the iPad. If anything, I think the 11-inch Pro might get a price hike up to $900 just because $800 doesn't mean what it used to mean. But if they start saying like the Pro apps are only available on the M2 version, you can get Final Cut on the iPad, but you gotta spend at least $1,000 or more on the iPad to get it to work. That makes me wonder like what other features are they gonna come up with in the future and say, yeah, like you can't have external webcam support or you can't have continuity camera with your iPad, but that's gonna require the M3 chip or the M4 chip in the future. And that's just gonna start to feel more and more ridiculous for me. And I don't wanna be software locked out of features. So I guess the only way I could justify upgrading my iPad in the future is if I got really, really into drawing and the Apple Pencil. And if I went back to school or something and needed to do a bunch of note taking, but I don't foresee any any of those things happening in the near-term future. I'm not a great artist, and I don't really plan to be, and even if I was just looking for something to draw on or take some notes, or if I'm laying out a house and I want to draw or something, I would just dust off the old 2018 iPad Pro. Who cares if it's not getting iPadOS updates anymore? If all I need is note-taking and drawing, who needs iPadOS 17 or iPadOS 18 or any of that stuff? That can just be my dedicated, you know, clipboard and pen, which I still have, and because the resale value on it is not very great. I don't really plan on selling it, despite the fact that I don't really use it on a regular basis. So that's kind of my takeaway from this video, is seeing how Apple is treating the iPad line and how they want to fundamentally from the ground up just say like, no, this has to be limited. This cannot do what a Mac can. Even if it has all of the same hardware as a Mac and more, they're like, nope, we can't tolerate that. Because it's an iPad, it has to be simplified and dumbed down. And that involves having less settings, less pro apps, and less control over the software. So as long as they have that fundamental limit towards the iPad, I see no reason in upgrading to it. And this story could change if Apple's fundamental ideas on what an iPad could be could update. And as iPhones have gotten bigger and more practical and let me do more and more work off of them, it's made me feel less purpose in the iPad, especially as the MacBook hardware has gotten so good now that I really wouldn't consider buying another iPad unless it could replace my MacBook. And I know there's a good chance that that may never happen because of how Apple views the iPad as a whole. If one day they say, you know what, let's just give all the iPad the same software that our Macs have. Let's let it run Mac OS. Let's let it have the pro apps. Let's let it have external webcam and microphone support that actually has settings and controls, whether it be a dual boot option, whatever it is. If they someday make an iPad Pro that can do everything my MacBook can, then I would start to consider in the future upgrading to, you know, an M4, M5 chip version that would hopefully be faster and higher performing than my MacBook Pro because I don't want to compromise on the great performance I have here. And I'm sure that the iPad will always be more thermally constrained than my big old MacBook Pro, but I would be willing to compromise on battery life and maybe put up with some thermal throttling if it meant that I could have one device that has a great camera, that has a touch display, but also that could do all of the same video editing, live streaming, and podcast recording that I use my MacBook for. So will I ever upgrade my iPad again? That's up to you, Apple. If you let the iPad start to replace a MacBook Pro, no, I'm not just talking about basic web browsing and some light video editing. I'm talking about everything a Mac can do, now an iPad can do in terms of software, that's when I would consider it. But until that day comes, I don't plan on upgrading, and it pains me to say that, because the iPad Pro used to be such a favorite for me, it used to be such a great product that I would try to use as much as I could throughout the day, but everything else has just surpassed it, and the iPad still feels stuck in 2015 with it can do some light photo editing, some light video editing, but if you really want to get work done, you gotta pull out the Mac still. As long as they view it that way, I'm not changing. But if any of you have hope out there for the future of the iPad, feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you all in the next one.